In this video, we're going to learn how to get and use information from user-driven events. What I mean by that is when a user, for example, clicks a button, we can get more information about that event, such as which button did they click, what color was the button, where was the mouse when they clicked it, and so forth. And the reason we're able to do this is because jQuery utilizes an event system, whereby an event object is guaranteed to be passed to any event handler. So if we make an event handler that responds to a click, this event creates an object, an event object, and that event object is guaranteed to give us properties about that event. For example, if it was a keyboard event, that event object would provide us with information such as what key was clicked or pressed on the keyboard. If it was a mouse type event, like a mouse over or a mouse click, we would get additional properties on the event object that tell us things like where the mouse was when the mouse was clicked. In this video, we'll also look at a data method of jQuery, which allows us to pass any type of data we want to one of our document object model elements. We can then access that information later as needed. We'll actually combine both of these techniques within this exercise. I've got the finished file here to show you exactly what we're shooting for in this exercise. You can see that there's a mouse over event on the bowl of rice because the mouse changes from the arrow to the pointing finger. And when we click, we get an alert box. The alert box may seem pretty simple because it just gives us some basic information that tells us some sources of grain. But what we're actually doing here is iterating or looping over an object that we created in JavaScript. And if I click OK, you can see that uh, it continues to loop because it's telling us more information about grains. And as I continue clicking, I continue iterating through the looped object. You'll need to open up exercise underscore three dot html from the chapter seven folder for this exercise. If you scroll up to the top, you'll find the script block with the document ready function. You'll see two variables being declared here, the var info and the var grain. The grain variable references an array called food labels, which associates these food items or strings with the string to the right, like name value pairs. And this is the data that we'll use later. You'll also see the jQuery that selects the image that responds to the mouse over by changing the cursor. Place your cursor under the assign the data comment. We'll use the jQuery selector to access the element and then assign data to that element. The element we want to assign the data to is the image. And you can see the image on line 61. And you'll see that it has an ID of grain IMG. We'll copy that and we'll use it as our selector. On line 35, where we assign the data, we invoke the jQuery method and pass to it that ID grain IMG. Next, we'll assign the data with the jQuery data method. And the data that we'll assign to it is the food label array and the grain.food label. The reason that we type grain.food label is because if we go back up to the object grain, you'll see that's the name of the variable. And food label is the name of the array. And that's what we want to assign. We want to assign that array as additional data to this DOM element, the div called grain image, which is the picture of the rice. And then we'll terminate the jQuery statement. Now we want to retrieve the data that we've just assigned. So locate the get the data comment, and we'll begin another jQuery function to an image tag whose ID is grain IMG. And then we'll get the data in response to a click of that image. We call the click method and pass the function that will respond to the click. Inside the function, there's a little difference in the way that we write the function here. In the past, we just wrote the function, but you can call a function, which is what we'll do here. The function will be called getFoodLabels. However, we want to pass the event object in in order to access properties of this event. So we need to pass that event object into the function that we're going to call. 
it's that object, that event object, that contains the extra information about the event, like what button was clicked, etc. So at this point, we've assigned some data to a DOM element. We're retrieving that data when the DOM element is clicked, and we're responding to that click by invoking a function called getFoodLabels that we haven't written just yet. And we've passed to that function the actual event object that will be generated here, in this case, a click event. So let's write the function under the comment loop through the object. We'll write the function and make sure that the name matches the name that you referenced earlier, get food labels. And be sure to pass the event object to the get food labels function. We've already discussed some unique events associated with the mouse events and the keyboard events, but all events share some common properties. And one such property is the target property, which is the object that invoked the handler in the first place, in this case, the grain image. What we want to do is capture that event target, which represents which image was clicked. We'll create a variable called element, which will represent which image was clicked. We, of course, have only one image in this file, but the idea is that we might have several dozen images. So rather than call the grain image by name, we're going to ask for the target property. This way, we can use this code for any image that might be clicked within this web page, because we now have a reference to that image. So now that we have the element that was clicked, we can get the data that's associated with that image. And remember, we assigned that data earlier. So we'll create a variable called object data. And we'll assign it the value of the element clicked. And then we'll reference the data property, passing the data method, the argument food label, to tell it which data we're looking for here. The data method could have passed a simple string, but we haven't passed it a simple string. We've passed it an array of strings, which we now need to loop through. So we're going to terminate our last line and start looping through the data. We're going to create a standard for loop here. Create an alert box that says sources of grain include, and then we'll concatenate that with the data that we're looping through, which is the food label, and obj data, which is the variable that stores that food label. And then we want the particular food product. So there's your name value pair in the food labels array. And what we're trying to access is those food labels. So it's dot food. We should be able to go ahead and save now and test, and we can see if our loop works. So we click for an alert box, and the first source of grain is brown rice. That's the first item in the array. But the real test is to go ahead and click the OK button to dismiss this alert box and see if it's followed by a second one, which is buckwheat, and it continues looping through the array. So in this lesson, we learned the concept of the event object which gives us information about an event that's taken place. And we also learn that we can assign data to any DOM element and then retrieve that data.